Climate change is directly impacting our recreation and tourism economies in Southern Oregon. The Oregon Shakespeare Festival in Ashland is a leading economic contributor to the region. They produce 11 plays on three stages, including an outdoor Elizabethan theater for an eight-month season that attracts over 100,000 theater fans each year. Allison Carey is a playwright and artistic advisor and is the director of OSF's 10-year project, American Revolutions, the United States History Cycle. Claudia Alex served for years as the company's community producer, most notably directing The Green Show that takes place outdoors before each evening's performance. One thing that uh, in one of your uh, activist roles, I, you did uh, attend the Climate March in April in Medford, uh, Claudia, and you mentioned there that you have uh, taken, uh, compiled a record of temperatures over a 10-year period. What did those, what did that record show as far as temperatures locally? Well, it's a habit that most people do. When you have a show, you make a mm -hmm. show report and you write down what are the things that you need to think about for that show. For us, our set is the world. We're outdoor theater. So one of okay. the things we made sure to record was the beginning temperature and the ending temperature of each show. Mm -hmm. Now, primarily, we started doing this because we were hoping to find out uh, what times of year are really, really hot, because maybe we won't book a large dance group at that time of year. What we found is this is 10 years worth of data and we see that the temperatures have steadily gone up mm -hmm. year after year after year. It's startling because you can really see it. It's a clear, it's a very clear picture that the numbers tell us. Mm. Um, and that means we have to be way more thoughtful about safety for our performers and our audience. We now have extreme heat protocols um, that we make sure to enact to to make sure everybody's safe. Um, we also have protocols for smoke, um, uh, for extreme weather like lightning or flood. Mm -hmm. um, and these are protocols we did not need to have a decade ago. Hmm. So when uh, we had uh, three really bad fire years uh, recently, uh, I think it was 2013 through, two, through 2015, and some shows were canceled, how many were canceled and what was the monetary effect of those cancellations? I believe it was 11 plays that okay. were canceled between 2013 and 2015 mm -hmm. and that was an impact of almost half a million dollars. Okay. Um, and it's so the impact, it, it's a huge monetary mm -hmm. impact, but it's also a huge psychological impact on the performers, sort of the uncertainty of, because it's not a perfect science, right, mm -hmm. when it's too smoky, right? And the primary mm -hmm. result of the fires was all the smoke that comes and sits in this, base, this basin. And you could even tell, feel the smoke going into the indoor theaters, right? Because mm -hmm. ultimately you're recirculating air, and when there's smoky air, it sneaks in. And the actors, you know, if you're singing or you're dancing, they're breathing breathing in this uh, smoke with very small particulates into their lungs, which can have a lasting impact. So you want to make sure that you actually call the performance before the time when you would endanger them in any way, but that is a very, very tricky thing mm. to assess. So we try and be as responsible as we can while also being responsive to the needs and desires of our audiences. And of course, we have to worry about our audiences sitting in the smoky bowl mm -hmm. and what's mm -hmm. going to happen to them. Well, I, I can give two observations. One is, I grew up in the Northwest. I grew up in Montana. Oh, so okay. dealing with fire smoke has always actually been a part of my regular life practice, mm. knowing that mm -hmm. that comes every season. Um, what we have noticed though, tracking, is that it's coming more. It's happening more. The rates are higher. Mm. Uh, we have to be way more thoughtful. So the steps that we've been taking are to make sure that we have a mach machinery to measure the level of particulates, making sure that we have really clear communication mm. plans and decision-making plans to make sure mm. we're being incredibly thoughtful about when do we make the call mm -hmm. and having a firm belief that we will make the call if that is necessary. We cancel the show if that is necessary. You have a green task force that actually addresses some of those issues. What are some of the things you're doing in that regard and that you're looking ahead to do? 
Well, the Green Task Force um, came really as a sort of a, bu a whole bunch of people from OSF concerned about this and figuring out what they can do. And I think over the years since it started, which was probably nine years ago, um, some of the practices that were first brought up as being necessary to be intentional about among the festival, uh, all across the festival have happened. Mm -hmm. Our production pra practices have become less environmentally toxic. Um, you know, our, our, our waste disposal is more efficient and direct. Um, and things like increasing use in recycling, looking more at all the practices in terms of when we have buildings and we improve them, do we get the light switches that turn off the lights autom automatically when movement stops in the room, and that's all really important. I also think that we are also trying to use our power, at, such as it is, as storytellers to try and sort of communicate the importance of this time in global history and, and inspire people to believe that believe two things. One, that something very real is happening, and two, that we can do something about it. Because people tend to, you know, you know mm -hmm. this, people tend to shut down. It's scary, right? But so we have to find that sweet spot of, no, 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 you can keep engaging. And, and I think we all believe that we can engage individually, but there's also, theater is such a great example of collaboration and broad scale engagement. That's just the way, and collaboration, that's how we do what we do. We, you can't make a play by yourself. Um, and so we model that kind of, yes, if we work together, we can do this. Well, uh, we also, um, uh, as part of the Oregon Shakespeare Festival, we try to be good citizens in our community. Mm. And I served on the Ashland City's ad hoc committee uh, to create a plan to address climate change and that was incredibly educational it was a room full of community members some of the people at that table were scientists others were retirees there were high school students at that table and uh, there were people at that table who had been in green shows each one of them had a very specific perspective and a lot of knowledge they brought to the table mm -hmm. and I'm really proud that the city has created a plan to address climate change and will be taking steps to, to support that plan. But the biggest thing that I walked away from that table thinking was, we should have enacted this plan 20 years ago. And for, for an example, one program we came up with is called Green Turgy. Um, and this was inspired by a conversation with a guy named Tony Leiserwitz at the Yale uh, Climate Change Communication Project. Mm -hmm. And he talked, unsurprisingly, about the way uh, the United States over the past 200 years, especially uh, white United States, has become dis, uh, almost willfully disassociate, disassociated from the natural world around us, mm -hmm. right? Because how else are you going to get people to go work in factories, <laughs> right? Because if someone had to choose between working in a factory and working outdoors, like, what would you choose? <laughs> I suppose it depends on the circumstances, but generally, you know, we needed nature to become something, to become something bad. So one of the things we started this year with our education department is actually in all the conversations we have with students, with adults who come to talk about the plays, is we ask them to sort of reconnect with the world outside the play because we tend to do plays that are set indoors. Not all of them, but mm -hmm. you know, you can, you're in this room, right? Mm -hmm. But you say, well, uh, the example we use is in the play called All the Way by Robert Schenken, which was commissioned from American Revolutions. There is a moment when Leonard, uh, Leonard, Lyndon Johnson um, uh, is negotiating with the senator for, for him to vote for the Civil Rights Act. Mm -hmm. And in order to get that vote, he gives um, the state rights to the Colorado River water, right? Which was a huge, the impact of the, how the Colorado River water was divvied up, huge impact on the way our country functions today. What is theater's role in inspiring people to some, towards some direct action, as necessary as that action might be? Mm -hmm. How do we do that in a way that is welcoming rather than uh, lecturing? And I, that's like putting the sort of worst possible spin on it. But I, I think the field as a whole has some trepidation because we don't know how to make the art yet. And we don't have enough variety of art around this issue yet so that everybody can find their own thing. You know, uh, there are mm -hmm. so many different plays on all kinds of different subjects, you can find the thing that touches your heart. Um, so we uh, are involved in an effort um, involving uh, artists and scientists and social scientists, which will, we hope, result in a national convening next year, really looking at how we all, how we can help the scientists and social scientists deliver the message that needs to be delivered, mm -hmm. delivered while also the social scientists and scientists can tell us not only the latest climate science, climate science 
but also how do you talk about this? And that's that's where this, the social science and the brain science come in, mm -hmm. comes in. How do you talk about this in a way that makes people brave and hopeful mm -hmm. and activated? Mm -hmm. And that's a tricky thing that we're all trying to figure out together. But that is where that's it. Like once we get that, we're good. We're not there yet. The work that I produce uh -huh. is me receiving the energy of the community and lifting up the things that are the loudest and the most urgent. Mm -hmm. And as the years have passed, the number of artistic projects or artistic stories that are reflecting upon our community's responses to climate change, they've just risen. They get higher and higher and higher every year. Mm -hmm. So for me, it's not even a necessity to have it as a programmatic goal in my work. It's already there and it'll always be there mm -hmm. until we address this thing. <laughs> yes. Okay. So okay. next year we'll be done. <laughs>